Hi everyone, I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and of course what you see in front of you is the ICOM 7300. I first saw this radio on a special episode of Amateur Logic TV where George Thomas, Tommy Martin, and Ray Novak from ICOM did a deep dive into the features of the radio when it first came out. From the time I saw that video, I knew I had to have this radio. Well, fast forward two years, or a little over two years, and I finally got enough money in the radio fund to go out and get one. It's become an amazingly popular radio over the last two years, and this was evidenced the other day on a 40-meter conversation I was listening to, where one ham reported that he was using an IC7300, and the other ham came back to him and said that he had made over 200 contacts with people using IC7300s just in the last several months. So it's pretty amazing. The radio itself is pretty amazing, and it has some very unique features compared to other rigs out there. However, one of the things that it has in common with most of the modern radios is the fact that it has about a zillion functions and menus and uh, features that most of us, myself included, never scratch the surface of when we're using the radio. So what I'm hoping to do with this series is to go through the entire manual of the radio, a few pages at a time. I'll try to keep these videos to no more than uh, somewhere between 5 and 15 minutes each. And we're going to take a deep dive, a really deep dive, and go through the ICOM 7300 from A to Z. So we're not going to start at the very beginning of the manual. I'm going to start in Section 3, Basic Operation, and we'll start right at the beginning of that in 3.2. So it says when first applying power, you should turn the volume knob all the way down and the... Uh, RF squelch knob should be centered, so we've got it there, so let's power it up. And then we can uh, adjust the volume here and get a little bit of audio, not too much on 20 meters. It's evening here as I'm recording this, so we'll just start looking through some of the features right here. And I'm going to go through this in order except for one piece. And we're going to do that right now because since you've got your shiny new um, brand new ICOM 7300, I think that there's one thing that we probably want to do before we do anything else with the radio. And we are going to uh, skip to uh, section 13. And it's uh, section 13, page 5. And that tells you how to program your call sign into the radio. Because once you get a brand new fancy radio like this, I think you definitely want to uh, at least put your call sign in. So what we're going to do is we're going to press the menu button. And then we're going to hit set. And then it's already on display. That's what we would... We would uh, scroll up and down to get to display and then we're going to touch display and we're going to scroll down to my call and then here we can put my call in so and my call is w a 2 i v d and we're going to hit enter, and now it shows it on the display here that you've got your call entered. And we can, you can either use the back arrow on the touch screen or you can use the exit button. Either one will do the same thing, and then we're going to go back one more. And so now let's turn it off. And now when we power it on, there we go. Got uh, your very own call sign displayed. So... That was an important one to put ahead of everything else. At least I think so. Okay, so let's finish up on uh, page 3-2. We've already uh, played with the volume control. We've turned it on and off a few times now. And uh, the first thing that we're going to look at is the VFOs. So we're in VFO mode right now where you can 
just tune a frequency and I have the spectrum scope displayed we'll talk about that later and it says right here on the upper right part of the display VFO a and then it's got a one below it that's memory channel one and it says blank so that means there's nothing programmed in memory channel one <coughs> I've got nothing programmed this in this at all yet um, but up on the right here you've got the a B button which allows you to switch between VFO A and B. And then you've also got the V slash M button, and that lets you switch between VFO and memory. And of course, if I go to memory, there's nothing in there because that's currently blank. So we'll go back to the VFO. And one of the other things you can do now, right now you can see on VFOB, I've got an 80 meter frequency in there. And VFOA, I've got 20 meters. If you press and hold the AB button, it will, and it would have beeped if I had the volume up, you would have heard a little beep. And now when I go to B, it's the same. So if you hold the button for one second, it actually populates whatever VFO you're not on with whichever one you are. So if I had been on the B one and held it, it would have put the 80 meter frequency in VFOA. And that's it for page 3.2. Okay, so let's move on to uh, page 3.3. Three. And uh, this is where we look at how you change bands, change operating modes. And uh, the 7300 is, of course, very intuitive uh, for this. If I want to change the band that I'm on, if I touch the megahertz on the touch screen, it takes you to the band screen. And we can change bands to, say, 40 meters. And uh, looks like we've got, well, looks like we've got somebody tuning around there. Um, but uh, there was a little activity at any rate so we're now on 40 meters but one of the other things that's not real obvious and they talk about in the book here is you've got memories that we just uh, we looked at how to go to memory mode and it's got a uh, hundred regular memories there but there's also another sort of quick shortcut memory that's built into the 7300 called band stacking registers. So we're up in the SSB part of the band here. If I touch the uh, megahertz again and I get to the band display, if I touch 7 again, it's now taken me to the second band stacking register and now I'm on uh, the CW portion of the 40 meter band and the mode is different, it's in CW and I'm down here on a different frequency. And if I touch it a third time, I'm yet on another frequency now, I'm up in the, uh, the FT8 portion of the band and my mode is set to, oops, didn't mean to do that, my mode is set to USB-D, which is data, we'll talk about that in a minute. And if I go and I touch it yet again, it puts me back up to where we started. We were, this was the first place we were. So you can, you have basically three band stacking registers for every band that are kind of like memories because it remembers the, the last VFO position for each of those band stacking registers. Now, I went to this screen and I repeatedly went back to this screen and then back out. You can also get to the band stacking registers by going into the band selection screen. And actually it says band stacking register on the top of the display there, which you might not know what that means <laughs> if you don't read that part in the manual. You can also go through the band stacking registers by pressing and holding the band key. So if I press it, it goes to the next one. If I press and hold it again, it goes to the next one. So you can stay right on this screen and scroll through the the three band stacking registers and then you can just hit the back arrow to get back out to the main screen. So that's kind of handy if you want to keep um, a couple of different uh, places that you like to go on each band. You can just use the band stacking registers. 
Um, and then the next part on 3.3, of course, is selecting the operating mode. We've sort of shown that a little bit, but if I want to change, we're in the lower sideband. If you just touch the mode uh, on the screen, it brings up the mode, and if and we're in lower sideband, you notice there is no LSB or USB here. It's just SSB. So if I touch it again, it'll toggle. Um, so each time you hit SSB, it toggles between uh, the two sidebands. And then the other thing, and you saw the dash D, if I hit data, it puts it into data mode. Um, and then this is a little bit out of place on the uh, in the manual I think but uh, when you are in data mode you can tell the radio and we're going to use this in the this is on page 33 if you press the menu button and I press set and I go to connectors uh, you can specify um, in with data modulation off where do I want it to get um, audio from and I can say the mic which is the front mic the accessory jack on the back or and mic comma accessory means it'll get it from either one so if there's audio on either one of them it'll take it and the USB data jack so you could actually use your audio on sideband with data off through here and then if I go down to the next page it's got the data mod so it gets data modulation from the USB port and that's not upper sideband that's the universal serial bus so it will use the USB built-in audio interface on the radio to get audio from in the data mode one other thing and I don't think they make this real clear that's not obvious these are on two different pages here if I get back out of this if I am if I go out of data mode and I say menu set and I go to connectors it's gonna make a liar out of me I thought that the data mode I thought this menu option actually went away if you weren't in data mode but apparently it is still there um, so I've now learned something new as well so that's how to change bands how to use the band stacking registers and how to change modes and how to set where the radio gets its audio from uh, depending on whether you're in data mode or not. And I think that's probably enough for our first session. So for the next session coming up, we're going to cover section 3, pages 4 through 6, where we'll take a look at all the different methods for entering frequencies and tuning and tuning steps. And we'll take a look at the band edge function that lets you know if you're inside or outside an amateur radio band. Thanks for watching Ham Cured Smoke. I'm Tom, WA2IVD.